Alright, thanks for watching, and today I want to calculate the surface integral of a function. And that's amazingly cool. You'll see. So here's the idea. Suppose you have a surface S that lies in three space, okay? And it can be parameterized with R U V. And think of the surface as being Earth. Like you're walking on the Earth, and suppose you have in the fourth dimension. It's very important. This is not in R3, it's sort of in R4. You have a function, f, lying above this. So this is maybe f of r u v. So again, suppose you're walking on Earth and above you there's a cloud or there's a, there's a sun or something. What you want to do, you want to calculate the volume above s and under f. So we want to find volume of this. And it turns out we already have the machinery to do that because remember last time we defined those little parallelograms ds and so the question is how do we find that volume? Double integral f ds over the surface s, it's simply base times height. So you see you double integrate those little I guess, parallel pipettes or something, those little cylinders. Each cylinder has height f of r u v and the base area ds. So it's double integral f of r u v ds. And remember from last time, we found that the ds is just the area of the parallelogram, which is just ru cross rv du dv. So this is the surface integral of f on that surface. And it's indeed a volume because, you know, ds is an area. So you multiply an area times the height. So it's a 3D thing, so it is a volume. So, for example, let's calculate the double integral over S of x squared y squared ds, where r u v is 2 u v u squared minus v squared, u squared plus v squared, where u squared plus v squared is less than or equal to 1. I might be mistaken, but it's either a hyperbola of one sheet or two sheets. So imagine you that you have, uh, let's say, hyperbola of two sheets over the circle. And so essentially what you're doing, you're integrating the function x squared plus y squared over that hyperbola of uh, two sheets. And by the way, there could be a z. That's not a problem at all. So here it's just to simplify. Okay. Well, let's just use this definition. So we have to do it step by step. First, let's calculate r u. Well, that is the de derivative of everything with respect to u. So 2v, 2u, 2u, and r v. That's 2u minus 2v, 2v. First of all, that. Now, let's just cross it. So ru cross rv. Well, that's ijk. Again, 2v, 2u, 2v. My v's look like u, sorry. And then 2u minus 2v, 2v. Let's do that. So you get 2u times 2v plus 2v times 2v. Wait. Uh, 2v, 2u. Ah, sorry. Erased it wrongly. 2v, uh, 2u, 2u. Okay, good. Now we have it. So uh, 
4 uv plus 4 uv, so 8 uv. J, it's 2, 4 v squared minus 4 u squared, but with the minus, which becomes 4 u squared minus 4 v squared. And lastly, minus 4 v squared minus 4 u squared. Good. That's the first thing. Next thing is, we want to calculate ds, which is just the length of that vector. Again, times du dv, but whatever. Uh, so ds, which is the length of ru times rv. And you'll see there's something beautiful happening soon. So square root of the first component squared. So 64u squared v squared plus, if you want, 4u squared minus 4v squared squared. And lastly, minus 4v squared minus 4u squared squared. Looks horrible, but let's just pray that there's a simplification. So 64u squared v squared plus 16 u to the 4 minus 2 times 4 times 4, 32 uh, u squared v squared. Well, let's continue. First of all, if you square those minuses, it become plus. So 16 v squared v to the 4th plus 2 times 4 times 4 plus 32 uh, v squared u squared plus um, 16 u to the fourth. Let's see, can we cancel out some stuff? Yes, indeed. Those two terms, they cancel out. Okay. And then, moreover, let's see, we have uh, like 16, yeah. Oh, sorry, I forgot. Uh -huh. I forgot to expand that. So, we still have the 16 v to the 4th, and then 16 v to the 4th plus 32 v squared u squared plus 16 u to the 4th. Okay, now, again, the 32 v squared u squared cancel out, and then you're left with, let's see, 16 u to the 4th and 16 u to the 4th. That's 32 u to the 4th plus 64 u squared v squared plus 32v to the fourth. And this looks much more factorizable, so that becomes square root of 32, square root of u to the fourth, plus two u squared v squared, plus v to the fourth, and that becomes square root of 32, square root of, very nice, u squared plus v squared squared, and that becomes, so 32 becomes 4 square root of 2, and then u squared plus v squared. Let's see, I think that's correct. Yeah, I think so. Okay, we have that. Now let's calculate our surface integral. integral f of x, y, z, ds. I'd like to remind you that f is just x squared plus y squared. That's double integral of f of r u v. So that becomes x of u v. So that becomes 4, uh, no sorry, uh, 2 u v squared plus u squared minus v squared squared, so again x squared and y squared, times ds, which just becomes 4 square root of 2, u squared plus v squared, du dv. Again, let's pray that there's a simplification. Double integral over d of 
four u squared v squared plus u to the fourth minus four u squared v squared plus v to the fourth, four squared of two u squared plus v squared du dv. This simplifies, so you have double integral over d u to the fourth plus four plus two sorry u squared v squared plus v to the fourth, four squared of two, u squared plus v squared, du dv. And notice, lo and behold, we have another square. So this indeed becomes double integral over d u squared plus v squared squared 4 root 2 u squared plus v squared du dv and that becomes 4 squared of 2 double integral over d u squared plus v squared cubed du dv and that's very very nice because remember what did we say about u squared plus v squared that's less than or equal to 1. So indeed, we have a disk of radius less than or equal to 1, which tells us its polar coordinates time. So 4 squared of 2, r is between 0 and 1, theta is between 0 and 2 pi, u squared plus v squared becomes r squared cubed r d r d theta. And we get 4 squared of 2. There's no theta, which means you just multiply by 2 pi. And this we get r to the 7th. So integral from 0 to 1. r to the 7th dr, which becomes so 8 squared of 2 pi. And r to the 7th becomes uh, 1 8, r to the 8 from 0 to 1, so it's 8 square root of 2 pi times 1 over 8, and that becomes square root of 2 pi, plus or minus some algebra mistakes. So you see this function would look very complicated, it actually simplifies tremendously with those uh, choice of uh, parametrizations. And again, the idea is a surface integral. It's just the same idea as last time for surface areas, except you multiply it by a function f. And indeed, you can think of, if you want, the surface area of a surface as just being the double integral 1 over ds. So it's really just a generalization of this. All right, so if you like that and you want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.